of him who dumped you sophomore year. Hi. So you see, we're practically brothers. But to prove their theory was universal, Watson Strogarts needed to find small worlds in networks without people. Tests have proven the great power system ready for transmission. Here was the perfect example to test their theory. America's massive power grid with enough high voltage cables to reach the moon. It's been described as the world's largest machine. So it was a kind of a, an organism that grew itself. The grid is the result of thousands of random events as new generators and cables were added to meet the growing demands of America's industry and population. We found that it too was a small world, that even though it had 5,000 power plants over half a continent of area, it only took a very few hops to get from any one to any other. We thought, okay, you know, let's be ambitious here. Let's think about, you know, completely different kinds of networks. I had heard that every neuron in your brain is just a few synapses away from every other neuron. But we were now in a position to be able to prove that that really was right. There is only one nervous system that has been fully mapped. The nervous system of a worm, called C. elegans. And that, we found, was a small world also. We found the same kind of result, short path lengths, high clustering. It was like time to uncork the champagne for both of us. It was very, very thrilling. They'd uncovered the invisible links that make the big world small. Watson Strogarth showed us a new view of the world in which distance vanishes. What goes around comes around faster than you think. Tokyo photographer Kenji Maeji is the second link in a chain. He's received a package from Australia and, paradoxically, he plans to send it back in order to get it closer to Boston. I don't think it would be easy, but I decided to send it to my eldest brother. Uh, his name is Nobuyoshi. He lives in Brisbane. Uh, he's a scientist, uh, so I figured he'd know a lot more scientific people than I would, and he's got a lot of contacts in the United States as well. Hey, good to see you. Most of our packages are on their way. In Germany, Jessica is following the progress of her package online. But many of the other chains are already broken. In Paris, the dancer Nadia is on vacation and her friend has found the package has come back from Boston unopened. This is Nadia's letter. It gets returned, so I guess it didn't make it. From 40 original starting points, 27 packages are still on their way somewhere, even crossing paths as they pass through the giant sorting hubs of the courier companies. And it's the significance of hubs that would be the next big discovery in network science. While Strogatz and Watts were pioneering small worlds, another scientist would look at the problem from a different angle. For Hungarian physicist Laszlo Barabashi, understanding networks held the promise of predicting the future. His inspiration came from a classic work of science fiction, Isaac Asimov's Foundation. I have said the empire will lie in ruins within the next century. Asimov's foundation centers on a mathematician with the ability to predict the future. But Barabashi had identified a flaw in the story. I started thinking, what is that I could do to predict the future? I realized that what is missing from Asimov's thinking is the network, the structure and the behavior of the network. Because events are never isolated. They depend on each other. They interact with each other. So we need to understand how they interact. To understand these interactions, Barabashi needed a network that had been thoroughly mapped. 
the major problem was that the data was incredibly difficult to find. His great luck came in the early 1990s. The World Wide Web was exploding in popularity. Here was a huge network he could map by tracing the links between web pages. No one directed the growth of the web. Anyone could put up a site and link to wherever they liked. So the expectation was that the structure would be entirely random. If the World Wide Web could be a random network, then the distribution of the links follows a bell curve. I would find something similar to this. In a bell curve, there are few extremes. Most web pages would be grouped in the middle, having the same number of links. But what he found was different. The web links were not evenly spread. Most pages had very few, but there were some with a huge number of connections. We found a few web pages that had thousands of links pointing to them. And these were the hubs. It was completely new, completely unexpected. First, we did not know what to do with that. This was no random world. It seemed to have an organizing principle based around hubs. In these early days of the web, long before the familiar supersites of today had emerged, Barabashi's study had glimpsed the future. It predicted the potential for the existence of huge hubs, like Amazon and Google and Yahoo turn out to be. Barabashi's hunch was that behind this pattern there may be a deeper truth lurking. By coincidence, Watts had just published his paper on the small world of Hollywood actors. Barabashi wondered if there could be hubs there too. I got an email from Laszlo Barabasi and he said, would I mind sharing some of the, the data? So we took the data set and we interpreted it just like the World Wide Web as a map. And we asked the question, how many links each actor has? We saw exactly the same pattern as we observed earlier on the World Wide Web. There were many, many actors that had only a few links to other actors. There were a few major hubs, however. Though it was there, right in front of them, Watts and Strogatz had missed a second great discovery. The funny thing is, we didn't really look. And so we had all this, this data looking, you know, staring us uh, in the face. And I never thought to actually plot the distribution. Finding hubs in Hollywood was a major breakthrough. It suggested that networks didn't just grow accidentally. They evolved according to some pattern. If so, hubs should be everywhere. And sure enough, when he looked, Barabashi found hub networks in transportation routes, in computer chips, and within the human cell. I kept thinking, how is it possible? Because they cannot be more different in the scope, in the mate, and their nature. More I thought about it, more I realized that there must be a simple explanation for that, because these are such a different systems that the only way they could be similar to each other is that there is one simple law that describes the structure of all of them. And he discovered that simple equation that describes our complex, interconnected world. PK equal K to the minus gamma. That is the formula. Here was the secret behind almost every network the structure that nature uses to spin its webs. And once it could be seen, it revealed networks have peculiar strengths and weaknesses with implications for all of us. There are hundreds and thousands and potentially millions of errors in my cell, and yet I don't even notice. The internet can work even when hundreds of its routers are not functional. If you remove the small nodes, 